Good day, YouTube. My name is Dan, and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. Today, I want to introduce to you an upcoming ICO that I'm very excited about, and it's called the Universal Reward Protocol, or URP for short. Before I go into the project, I just want to say the biggest thank you to everyone who has been liking, subscribing, and commenting on our channel. You guys are the one who's helping this channel to grow, and I really appreciate your support. So a very big thank you from the bottom of my heart. Coming back to today's project, URP is a shopper's reward project. It's very similar to Nucleus Vision in the sense that it asks permissions from shoppers to collect their data and then it sells that data to retailers who can better tailor make discounts and rewards for the shopper to create loyalty. The thing that captured my attention is that URP is already live and being used by mega retail companies such as Auchan. And Auchan is the world's 12th largest retailer and they are also the partner of Sun Art Retail. Auchan has over 600 hypermarkets and over 2,800 supermarkets worldwide across 15 countries. Their annual revenue is over $44 billion. Another one of their partners is Carrefour, who is the largest French retailer with over 12,000 shops in 30 countries. And Carrefour boasts an annual revenue of $78.9 billion in 2017. Another one of their partners is Gelarius. Lafayette, who is an upmarket up French department store chain, and I believe that their white paper also stated that Nestle was using their product currently. Furthermore, the equipment is already live in currently over 100,000 square meters of shop space. They have recorded over 10 million visits of 350,000 shoppers, and already they've sent out over 40,000 customized offers. So this is a project that's already running with very big partnerships and has a working product. I'm very big on blockchain in the retail space. And if you watch my Nucleus Vision video, you would know that I'm big on Nucleus Vision as a project. But after reviewing this project, I think that URP has the potential to overtake Nucleus Vision. Furthermore, it's currently only in the private sale stage. So imagine getting into Nucleus Vision back in its private sale days. So I hope that this introduction has stirred up your appetite to want to know more about URP. To learn more about this project, keep watching this video. Currently, over 90% of all retail sales are still done in brick and mortar stores, which means that people still like going to an actual physical store to see and try on the clothes before buying it. However, times also are changing and it is known that digital influ interactions influence 56 cents of every dollar that is spent in brick and mortar stores. So that's more than a 50% influence weight. Shoppers who use their smartphones in stores are 40% more likely to convert to sales and digital marketing on mobile phones is estimated to reach 70 billion in 2018, which is 40% of all ad revenue spent in the world. Shoppers currently are complaining that they want a more personalized experience in store with 77 of shoppers stating that a loyalty program should have personalized rewards and 75% of them wanted to be rewarded for engagements besides purchase, which means that they didn't want a reward only at the point when they bought a product. They wanted a reward just for browsing the website or visiting the shop, etc. Now, loyalty programs are very lucrative for businesses. 72% of shoppers say that with all other factors equal, they will buy from a retailer with a loyalty program over another retailer. And I can relate to this because I personally buy my coffee every morning from a shop with a loyalty stamp card. And check this out, large retailers today are reporting that now over 50% of their revenues are coming from members with loyalty programs. So these numbers show us why services like URP who create that loyalty program are highly valued and why retail shops are willing to pay a lot of money to be part of the system. The whole process will begin with the retailer. The retailer will have a software that is known as the campaign manager. And there are two main components of the campaign manager. The reward manager allows the retailers to create a campaign and Part of that creation will also include um, creating a reward to incentivize customers to achieve that goal. So an example is I could have a campaign that wants to improve the rate of customers returning to my shop and the reward I create then to incentivize that is to give tokens or discounts for returning to the same shop. 
The second key component of the campaign manager is the redemption campaign manager. And this is a tool that will then create the personalized offers for each shopper. Once the campaign details are filled in, the campaign will then be translated into a smart contract and deployed on the blockchain. At the same time, the reward tokens for the shoppers will be held in a separate escrow and then released to the shoppers as required by the smart contract. All the time that this is happening, the campaign manager will also be gathering information, for example, gathering information about the performance of each campaign, the amount of tokens redeemed for each campaign, etc. So that at the end of the day, the retailers can get a summary of the data and they can use that data to further experiment different marketing strategies to find out what is the most effective marketing for their business. The shopper will interact with URP from an app on their mobile device. The app will have three main components. The first component is a wallet to store the URP tokens that they earn. And that URP tokens can be used to purchase things in the shop or sold on the exchange for money. The second component is the profile manager. And this is the part of the app that allows the shopper to browse the campaigns that they are currently eligible to fulfill. The shopper can choose to automatically opt in for all campaigns, or they can choose to be informed and be and require an authentication before their data is collected. The privacy manager also allows shopper to decide what type of data they share with which retailer and also when they share the data with the retailer. So it's a very nice model where the shopper has full control of their personal data and is rewarded for providing essential data. This is opposed to Google and Facebook who currently take our personal data for free, they don't give us a cent for it, and then they sell it to other parties for millions of dollars without our real consent or knowledge and without giving us any benefits. Data collection will happen via a very simple plug and play IoT device. This device will collect signals from smartphones uh, through the app and then they will send it to the retailer as well as to the blockchain. The actual device, the hardware, is auto-calibrated, so it's a very easy to use hardware. You simply plug and play it literally into the store. The hardware or the, will also have a store mapping software that can analyze in-store behavior and where to best locate each product category. So it's very frontier technology that even modern day retailers uh, have difficulty accessing to. Now, after the information is collected by the sensors, okay, the data is then processed by a very interesting and feature technology that is called the Okai Dep. The Okai Dep is uh, the world's first in-store solution that confronts a real-time shopper data with their actual purchases. So what is happening is that this whole system is run with artificial intelligence. It's run by AI. So while the shopper is shopping, the the AI is collecting information from the sensors, but at the same time, it's not just processing that one person's information. It is linking that one person's information to the database that it has, which has like 10 million individual shopping paths currently and still growing. Um, and it will integrate all of that to find the newest and optimal shopping interest for the shopper. So it might group from, let's say, the 10 million data it has, it might find like uh, 100,000 people who are shopping in the same area, buying, looking at the same stuff that the shopper is currently looking at. And then based on the previous behavior of those other shoppers and where they went to and what kind of product they got, it will then suggest to the shopper what products um, in the shop they could potentially be interested in. So it's a system that is continuously being fed with new data from tens of thousands of customers at any point in time and is producing new market leads every single day. All of this data would then be collated and presented to the retailers in a very digestible manner in a simple dashboard on the app on their computers. Finally, the entire process from the shopper's choice to the census and the collection of information, so the type of information that is collected is called the proof of behavior. This is what validates the smart contracts in the system. So until a behavior, which is the, the behavior of the shopper, so until that information is received, and then the shopper themselves receive proofs of that being executed. And the proof of that is that they will be rewarded with tokens or loyalty rewards. The smart contract is not fully executed. For the smart contract to be fully executed, everyone has to be getting what they want and everyone has to be happy. And that is called the proof of behavior. So this is a project that has the Internet of Things hardware. It has smart contracts and blockchain technology, and it also uses AI artificial intelligence technology. 
This is all next gen technology in one project. And if you see now Matrix AI video, you will know that I think the fusion of these technologies is the future. I mean, blockchain, artificial intelligence, and the Internet of Things, or IoT, they are all great technologies individually, but they were never meant to work independently. All of these technologies complement each other, and the best projects in the future will combine these different technologies together to bring out the best of each technology. And that is what URLP as a project does. So I really like the way or the tech of this project. Now, very quickly, let's take a look at the token use. There are two main use cases for the URP token. And the first you already know, the first use is, is used as a reward token that retailers will give to shoppers who participate in their campaigns. The second use is for curation of the campaign contracts. Think of this like the mining for this project. So another way to earn URP tokens is to check the contracts or the campaigns um, that the retailers create. To prevent retailers from putting up unreasonable campaigns that cannot be practically fulfilled, there will be curators who will check each and every contract. Each time a contract is published, the retailer has to put up a small sum of URP tokens as collateral. If the contract is deemed invalid or unfair, the collateral will be lost. So this system of curators and checking of the contracts will encourage good behavior in the system and creation of fair campaigns for the shoppers. This is a table that compares URP to the other competitors in the space. There are some non-blockchain projects like Shopkick and Retail Next, but really the only real good competitor in the space is Nucleus Vision. Now, both URP and Nucleus Vision are blockchain projects. In fact, they are the only two blockchain projects in this retail space currently. And both of these projects are actually based in very different parts of the world geographically. Nucleus Vision is based in India and URP is based in Europe. So there's a lot of room to grow in the world without the projects actually competing with each other. But if you wanted to compare the technology of both these projects side by side, here's how they compare. In terms of the control of data, whether shoppers will have control of their own data, I think that both these projects do it well. Both these projects provide the shoppers with full control of their own data. Both these projects have opt-in and opt-out features. I think they're pretty uh, similar in this case. Where it gets a little bit different is in terms of the rewardable behaviors. In Nucleus Vision, a shopper is only rewarded when they visit a store with the hardware, the ION, the ION sensors in the shop. In ULP though, the rewardable behavior is not actually linked to any physical visiting of the stores. So it is possible in ULP um, to be rewarded for simply logging into a website from home as long as you're using the app because the reward is app based. That means that as many um, tasks as you can come up with for the app, there's as many different ways that a shopper can be rewarded. So it's basically an infinite number of ways that a shopper can potentially be rewarded. Okay, there's no limit to the kind of um, campaigns that you can create. Um, both of these projects are blockchain projects, so both are secure and easy to implement. Um, and both their hardwares are very easy to implement. Both uh, the sensors are plug and play basically. Um, in terms of the reach of the project, okay, with Nucleus Vision, Retailers need to negotiate with Nucleus company itself to enter into the Nucleus Vision network. But in URP, it's a little bit more open source and any retailer or any dApp can basically join the network and launch a campaign straight away. And finally, in terms of the consumer knowledge that the retailer gets, URP here provides unlimited data based on the fusion algorithms from their AI system. So they're really uh, combining and processing big data from tens of millions of um, shopping habits. It says here in this article that Nucleus Vision's consumer data is from in-store only. That's not entirely accurate. The consumer's data in Nucleus Vision is stored and built on the blockchain so that over time, that data actually becomes more and more accurate. But Nucleus Vision, uh, uh, data for the consumer um, knowledge is actually individually based and is not AI fusion based. It doesn't draw from a pool of like hundreds of, uh, from tens of millions of people. So overall, I think both Nucleus Vision and URP are very solid projects that are really head and shoulders above the other non-blockchain solutions. Okay, They should basically blow the other projects out of the water. But based on this table, if we were to compare them side by side, URP seems to have the advantage in terms of having a broader scope in many areas. 
And you guys know that I've reviewed Nucleus Vision and I do think very highly of the project. But after reviewing this project, I actually think that ULP will give them a big run for their money. This is the team behind the project. The team has three co-founders. One of the co-founders is a person by the name of Thomas Wolf, and he's the former CEO of France Catalina, and he's also the former regional director of Europe Catalina. And Catalina is a world leader in digital couponing with the largest database of shopper purchase history globally. So this guy is a world's leader in this area of retail. So Thomas Wolf is the current CEO of this project. The next two co-founders are fairly young um, men. One is Yves Benchimo and the other is Louis Milan. And both of them graduated from Eco Polytechnic. And both of them also got their respective master's degree from UC Berkeley. They then both started a company that was called Okai.io in 2015. And Okai.io is basically the root project or, or the the prototype project of URP, okay? It was Okai IO that initially got the partnerships with Oshon, Kafu, and more. And it was also Okai.io that won the award-winning patent technology that they currently use. So if I'm reading this and guessing this right, the impression I'm getting is that Okai.io was the original project and it was a very smart project with award-winning patents. And as a result, Okai IO took off very fast with very big partnerships. But then the next step of growing the, the company was to integrate it with blockchain for the security of the ledger, etc. And then at the same time, they probably realized that they needed a bigger team and some more experience. And so that is where Thomas Wolf came in and URP as a project began. At least I think that's what happened. And it's good because it means that the project is building on already a very successful project and the two young genius co-founders are humble and smart enough to invite a world leader in the field to join the project and to take it to greater heights. So you can go through the rest of the team's resume in your own time, but overall it's a well-balanced and capable team. These are their advisors, and it's also an impressive list. You have Jer Jeremy Bokoba, who is the lead blockchain developer of Stratis, and everyone knows the Stratis project, so they've definitely got their blockchain expertise covered. There's also Francoise Popat, who is a member of the Mouliez family, who basically own the Oshon group. And then there's Laurent Gao, who is a professor in electrical engineering and computer science at UC Berkeley, and more advisors. It's an impressive list of advisors. This is their roadmap. As you can see, it's quite a busy roadmap. And I think that the majority of the milestones that will interest us as token investors are, will be in 2019. So I've blown up 2019 on the right hand side. In 2018, the main things I think for us to note is that the third quarter will basically be their token sale throughout the entire third quarter. And then their test net is due towards the end of the fourth quarter. In 2019, the first quarter will continue to be um, testing of the test net and it's only in the second quarter of 2019 so about one year away from now that they will have the release of their main net it's basically in the third quarter of next year that they sort of become like open source where they invite other devs to join the protocol and then it's in towards the end of next year that they'll begin international expansion in europe and china the roadmap then finally ends in 2020 with international expansion over to North and South America. And by then the whole product or the URP global scale up and every facet of the shopping behavior should be um, in full working by then. So it's quite a long huddle and we're really getting into this project very, very early if uh, we decide to get into any time of the token sale. Talking about token sale, um, we will look at the token economics to run up this review. There will be a total of 600 million tokens for the project, of which 240 million, basically 40%, will be sold in the entire token sale. 40% uh, is pretty average amount. Okay, They have a slightly bigger than normal reserve. So the reserve is sitting at 35% and usually it sits around the 15 to 25% mark. But the rest of the figures in terms of allocation of funds is pretty standard. Now the entire token sale will happen over three rounds. There will be a private sale which has already started, then there will be the pre-sale, and then there will be the public sale. 
The private sale which is happening now will go on for a maximum of two months and will require a minimum of 20 ether uh, to join it. While 20 ether may sound like a lot, um, it's actually not that much for a private sale because a private sale is meant for uh, industrial or very big players to invest. And 20 ether with the current pricing of ether is sitting about you know 12 grand uh, USD. So that's actually not a lot to jump into a private sale. Uh, private sales are known to have very big discount and the discount here will be a whooping 40% with only two months lock-in. So this is a very big bonus. Usually bonuses will sit somewhere between like 30% and the, the lock-in periods could be quite long, anywhere between six months to a year. So here you got a very big bonus with a very short lock-in period. When the private sale finishes, the pre-sale will commence seven days after the private sales ends, and then the pre-sale will have a duration of one month. And please note that the durations may be significantly shorter. So even though private sale it says that it can go up to two months, the private sale could finish in a week, and then you would wait just another week before pre-sale. So the, the whole durations could be a lot shorter. The pre-sale discounts are also very significant. So you get 25% discount for phase one and 15% discount for phase two. And both of these will also have a similar lock-in period for two months. And for the pre-sale, you have a minimum investment of five ether. Now, the, the information about the lock-in period for two months and the big bonuses is significant um, because what will happen potentially, right? Two months after the coin hits the exchanges, okay, uh, is the day two months in the same day, the pre-sale and the private sale um, lock-ins will expire, which means that the people who have bought the coin at a very big bonuses will potentially just sell the coins because they will already have seen a very big gain in the returns. So potentially you might see a dump on the day that the coins get unlocked. It doesn't mean it will definitely happen, but the chance of a dump happening uh, increases when one of two things occur. The first is if the initial discount is large, which is the case in this um, project. And the second is if the dates of the token being unlocked all happen on the same day. So what a lot of projects are doing these days is that they will stagger out the lock-in dates. So, um, you know, maybe for private sale, you lock in for six months, for pre-sale, you lock in for just one month and then three months for phase one and phase two. So then the, the dump doesn't happen all at the same time. But when it all ends on the same time, which is two months after you hit exchange, then you really got to be prepared for a potential dump. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing if you're aware of it, because another way of looking at the whole scenario is that there's a potential day that the tokens will be on sale if you want to get into the project. Finally, there will be a whitelist for the public sale, so make sure you sign up for that closer to the time if you are interested. Now, when we look at the token pricing and whether or not this is a worthwhile um, project to jump in right now, the soft cap for the project is 5 million euro and the hard cap is 20 million euro. Okay, 20 million is not a lot for a hard cap and I think that they will definitely hit the hard cap. 20 million euro is the equivalent of 23.6 million USD currently. Now, for those who don't understand the terms of soft cap and hard cap, soft cap is the minimum amount that they must raise in the fundraising. If not, the whole fundraising is considered a failure and they will have to refund all the funds. A hard cap is the highest amount that they are allowed to raise during the fundraising. And the hard cap is what usually gives us an indication of the market cap when this project is to first hit the market. Now, going by a hard cap of 23.6 million, which is 40% of the current tokens, that gives us a maximum, okay, a maximum of 59 million for the starting hard cap. Uh, that is the maximum. In re realistically speaking, it's going to be a lot lower than that uh, because not all the tokens will be circulating straight away. So we can estimate that their market cap is going to sit anywhere between 23 to 59 million USD. Now, in a market crash like now, Nucleus Vision is really their only competitor in the blockchain space. And Nucleus Vision is currently sitting at a market cap of 72 million, so higher than that. And this is in a very down market. Okay, When the market was slightly better, uh, still in the down market, but slightly better, Nucleus Vision was worth over 200 million um, in late April. And so that's the kind of returns you can realistically hope for if the market continues the way it is, which is still somewhat of a bear market situation. But the token sale for this whole project is estimated to end three or four months from now. So I'm very hopeful that the market will be a lot better by then. 
in the long term, what kind of prices can we hope to see in URLP or Nucleus Vision, these sort of retail blockchain projects? Okay, we are talking about a 70 billion mobile advertising industry of which both of these projects are current leaders. Okay, all the non-blockchain um, equivalent kind of retail projects um, can't really compare in terms of technology. Okay, so these are the two best projects in the world. They currently, this project, okay, currently has a great team. They have great technology. They have a patented working product already in the field and they have mega retail partners, okay, people like Carrefour. The annual combined revenues of their partners, just their partners alone, goes way over a hundred billion dollars annually okay so in my opinion i think that this project would easily be a multi-billion dollar project in the long term okay this is just my speculation uh, but i wouldn't be surprised if they hit the two dollar the two billion dollar market cap over the next two years a two billion dollar market cap would see anywhere between 70x to 100x return okay a $2 billion market cap is not that hard to reach or that amazing in the crypto space. I mean, that's somewhere along where VeChain is currently, and that's not even in the top 15 in a very uh, bearish market. Okay? In a good market, $2 billion would sit you somewhere in the top 30 projects. And can this coin be a top 30 project? Sure, why not? So URLP or Universal Reward Protocol is a project that I definitely got my eye on. Um, let me know in the comment section what you think of URP as well. I'm not a professional and none of this is financial advice, so please always do your own research and make your own decisions. If you like this video, do give us that like and subscribe, and do also join our Telegram group where we have great conversations over coins like these. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Have a fantastic day wherever you are, and I'll catch you guys again very soon.